Kentucky. All right, the political game of chicken over the debt ceiling may be nearing an end, but our next guest says the current deal will still leave the government with the deficits much greater than a trillion dollars a year, big enough to ensure a downgrade by credit rating agencies. Peter Morici is a professor at the Smith School of Business, University of Maryland, and former chief economist at the U.S. International Trade Commission. He's also a Bloomberg Best Economist. Professor Morici, pleasure to have you on today. Nice to be with you. Well, I know that uh, you have been watching reaction from D.C. I'm sure all uh, the last two weeks nonstop. I don't know if you had a chance to watch senior advisory Valerie Jarrett. They're talking about the deal. I did. You obviously differ in opinion based on some of your recent writings. Well, both sides are saying right now it's a great deal, but in reality, they've kicked the can down the road again. Uh, the initial 900 billion leaves Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare alone. Uh, and the 1.5 trillion only materializes if they agree on a tax package of reforms, which means a tax increase, and, uh, and, and cuts in these areas. And if they can't agree, then we have some more across-the-board cuts, but they still don't touch unemployment, Social Security, and Medicare, and those are where the problems are. So if the administration and the Democrats continue to insist on protecting the poor, that's their slogan, by protecting these programs, we will get to the point where we're closing embassies or we will have to dramatically increase taxes because the rate of growth in those programs is just too much. But you make the point even by increasing taxes. You made this point in one of your recent pieces. Increasing everyone's taxes 50 percent would still leave an annual deficit of nearly a trillion dollars. So, I that, mean, what, That's absolutely right. If they don't cut then the entitlement programs, if they don't delve into Social Security, there's really no hope. It seems. Well, I think that we are going to, to sail this channel again, uh, and we're going to go through yet another round of, 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 or another crisis with regard to the budget. We can cut the costs of these programs if we choose to, without throwing people out on the street, without denying people health care, but we're going to have to do things a lot smarter. Other industrialized countries get all the things done that we get done but they don't have these kinds of deficits. So by the standards of Germany or Japan, we ought to be able to do things better, and we're just going to have to. But it's clear that this administration and this president, like the last one, is not about to make the kinds of systemic reforms necessary to accomplish those goals. Well, here's a scary thought, and I, I heard Tom Keene mention this earlier on his show. He was talking about the opinion piece in the New York Times today by Paul Krugman, saying that uh, basically he's talking about this deal, saying it will take America a long way down the road to becoming uh, to banana republic status. Very scary stuff. Do you think that is really where we're headed? And I, I don't think that your solution to that issue is probably the same as Krugman's. Well, no. I mean, Mr. Krugman is hardly worried about our deficits at all, but yet it's taken us down the road of being a banana republic right now. Uh, you know, Brazil's debt is more attractive to investors, you know, as measured by the various indices you folks use, than U.S. debt. You have to pay more for a, US sw a swap on U.S. bonds right now uh, than Brazilian bonds. Uh, why? Brazil, we know, is, does, is go can manage its budget. We, we haven't seen any evidence so far that Washington can. As this deal provides zero evidence in that regard. And well, then, not zero, 10 percent. Very quickly, Professor, we've got about 20 seconds here. Do you think, fast forward six months from now, a year from now, we're in 2012, are we going to be having the same exact conversation? Yes, I do. We'll either have it when this committee reports and, and, and there's a fit over that with these automatic cuts that follow, or after the president is reelected, and I expect him to be reelected re despite all that's going on, then he will surprise us by saying America needs a value-added tax, which would be the worst thing, because our programs are so much less efficient than Europe's that to go forward with the kind of inefficiency and costs we have and All just right. pay for it with more Professor taxes will kill growth. Sorry, we got to leave it there.